So welcome, it's the 9th of November, and for those that are tuning in for the first time or watching this on Instagram, it's also on YouTube, on my YouTube page, Drum Clips. Carl Brazil, where have you been? We're missing you down here, Mr. Brazil. So obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can't see what's happening on YouTube. One of my favourite percussionists has just come into the house. Um, is Guinness World Records I see in the back of my... Yes, it is. Um, so, Joanna's in the house. I always say her name wrong because she's a French-Canadian, but um, she is a wonderful percussionist. Um, so yes, um, so obviously anything that comes in here on my Instagram, you can't see on YouTube. So Carl Brazil's in the house and he just gave me a hey mate. That's as much as I get from Carl Brazil now. He's too big time. He doesn't bother contacting me anymore. Um, so going back to um, the question I had in here, a Guinness Book of Records. Yes, up on the, on the, hang on, on my left hand side. You might be able to see that. There is a Guinness Book of Records certificate. Um, that was uh, back in 2016, 3rd of October. The largest drumming lesson involved 1,827 participants and was achieved by Inspireworks Street Child United. Um, I saw percussion works in here. I don't know if you guys were involved in that as well. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about that actually. Uh, I was very fortunate that they gave me uh, gave me a certificate. Uh, in fact, I've got another picture on the wall of me with the certificate when they presented it. Um, but a great event for a great charity, Street Child. Um, if you get a chance, go and um, check them out. Street Child. It's an amazing charity, and it's basically the charity was set up by a single person, a woman, who um, is trying to get as many children off the streets around the world as possible. Um, <clears throat> so go and check it out, it's an amazing charity. I only ever get involved, I don't get involved in many charities. Um, Teenage Cancer is a big charity for me. Um, Street Child is, is, is an amazing thing with what they're trying to do. And they're using sports to spread the word. They don't want anything from people, it's just they want um, exposure, they want people to know about their charity and it is unbelievable. And like I said, they're getting children off the streets um, and into some kind of form of um, housing or around the world. Now, I have to just say, just because you pointed that up, you would think, like for example, some countries around the world, if you live on the street, it's illegal. Um, but these children have no choice but to live on the street. So what Street Trial do is they try to get these children involved in a sporting event, and as soon as they get involved in a sporting event, the government or their local, their country, has to give them either a passport or an identification number. And as soon as they get a passport or an identification number, the government have to be responsible for them. So it's an incredible charity, but what's so sad about this charity is you would think, like I did, that it would be in places like India, um, war-torn or war-torn places where these children are living on the street but no it's not um, England uh, everywhere around the world the, the, my, the stories I heard about kids in, Amer in England living on the street running away from home never ever being reported missing it's just horrendous and very very scary um, unfortunately these kids end up in places that they don't want to be um, and some of the stories are quite horrific and you would think oh yeah okay we live in England okay well that's not going to happen often I think you'll find that the statistics are something like 10 children a week disappear in the UK and are never accounted for England yeah exactly so I'm sorry to, to give you that but I thought it was a good message on that that event and so that was the Guinness but they asked me Inspire Works which is a percussion setup asked me to get involved in it I had no hesitation I've been following what they've been trying to do for quite a few years um, I just had to do something with Street Child and like I said I never did it for a certificate but I was involved in that event and uh, they, you only get one certificate Inspire Works got that um, um, Got that, got a certificate, and they also got me a certificate for being involved. So, um, so yeah, check it out. It's called Street Child. M amazing, an absolutely incredible uh, charity. 
Um, and like I said, what they're looking for more than, they're not looking for money or they're looking for people to spread the word. And they've got a lot of an incredible sportsmen all around the world. Um, the, the, one of the main ambassadors, I'm going to get this wrong now, is an Arsenal, ex-Arsenal footballer, left back and played for Brazil. I've forgotten his name. Terrible. Marcus, no. Anyway, I'm not going any further with that because I've forgotten. Anyway, I hope we're all well. Um, we're back to my show, which is me blabbering in front of a camera for 30, 35 minutes. So what a week. Wow. Seriously. Who, who needs Netflix? Who needs Netflix with what we've been witnessing this week? Mind you, was that really a surprise? Um, I've had messages. Um, you wake up in the morning. Who's... Is he in charge yet? Is he not in charge? What's going on? What, what's, what, the, uh, ooh, ah, wow. Um, like I said, what a week in the history of the world. Um, don't do politics here. Um, but like I said, it's, it's kept everyone uh, uh, gl glued to their social media, to their news, to their TV stations. Why we find out who's going to be the next prime minister, president sorry, of, of America. Um, so... Any questions this week, pop them in the box at the bottom. Uh, anything, anything at all. Um, you know, uh, anything that you see on the wall, etc., uh, etc. Et I've got a topic um, to discuss today. Um, I've got some news. I've got some drum news. I've got a giveaway, like I always do, which will be coming at the end. And if you're watching this afterwards on YouTube, um, Unfortunately, the prize is gone. Or if you're watching this on Netf oh, Netflix, on um, Instagram later, the uh, it's the prize would have already gone. So, so in the news, let's talk about that. So, Zildjian, you may have seen last week, launched a new symbol range called the Concept Shop, um, which looks pretty cool and pretty amazing. And I'm going to try and get um, Paul Francis uh, in coming on to do one of these live chats soon. We've been talking about it for a while. Timing just hasn't been right. And to talk a little bit more about the concept shop. Um, some amazing looks, looking products. They're limited edition, but I'm sure that if um, they come out and people like them, they're actually gonna um, release more. And I think they're only available at the moment in the US, but go over to Zildjian's social media or their website and have a look at the concept shop. It's, uh, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. Um, one of the things that um, a lot of companies do is they release quite a bit of prototype products around this time of the year because PASIC is coming up in a couple of weeks' time, which we talked about last week. And PASIC, when you could go, this year it's online, but I think there's still deals going on. But what they, the companies usually do is they bring all their prototypes out and you can buy their prototypes. In fact, if you look at the, um, on, online today, if you look at a set of uh, 10 and a half inch hi-hats, I bought these uh, in 2005. These were in, created with a great, a good buddy of mine, Billy Ward and Paul Francis and Leon. Uh, they've got some rivets at the bottom, um, but I know that um, a lot of the companies are doing some prototypes. And I think, like I said, they're doing some form of, thing online with PASIC where you can still buy some of the prototypes. Um, Vic Firth have also got some new graphics on their practice pads, which I have to say look really cool. In fact, um, they're doing some really amazing stuff at the moment uh, with their merch. One of the things that's happened since lockdown is that um, they really pushed out their uh, merch catalogue for Zildjian and Vic Firth, the practice pads, etc, etc. Um, so go and take a look at that. Uh, I discussed it again last week, but uh, my masterclass, my next Zoom masterclass is on the 18th of November at 8 o'clock. Um, and the subject is time and groove. And uh, there's only 15 places. Most of those places have gone. Um, it's only 15 places and it's only £15. There'll be a guest. I never announced a guest. Um, so there's a, an amazing drummer that's coming on as my guest to talk about that topic um, as well. So, uh, like I said, that's the 18th of November. It kicks off at 8 o'clock in the UK time. DM me or whatever if you want to know more information about that. I will tell you about my guests this week um, towards the end of the show. Um, so, 
I've got no questions. Uh, we are going to do a drum, little one minute drum lesson today. I've got a little exercise for you today. Um, I'm going to try and get the setup a little bit better for you to see this time. Um, but I've got a topic. Ollie was kind enough to send me a topic that I thought was actually a really good topic to talk about and something that um, I talk about a lot in my lessons and I get a lot of emails about this. And that is career paths as a drummer, which, like I said, is um, a really good topic. Um, forget the situation that we're in right now, because I think that maybe that's changed. And we have discussed on previous shows about now using this time to uh, work on your skills, work on new skills, etc., etc. So uh, I'm just going to have a little sip of coffee. <clears throat> so I hope. I go through some questions that I get sent and it seems to be a very very common question and that is a lot of parents or young adults coming to the end of their schooling come to me and go right okay what do we do what what music college do I go to which school should I go to uh, I want to do more in the music industry I'm 17 I'm 18 years old is there any jobs can I get a, can I become a session drummer can I become a touring drummer, etc., etc.? And it's a very, very difficult answer, but one that I, I know my parents asked the same questions when I was leaving school, and one as a parent I've asked for my children um, when they left school and they chose the, the skill sets that they chose to go into. Um, and so I thought that. Um, and if there's any questions regarding that, please put them in the question mark. But the subject matter is quite a, a big, in-depth subject matter. So I thought I'd let you know, first of all, a little story on how I started that hopefully will be relevant to what's going on. So just because you've been to a music college doesn't guarantee that you're going to get a gig. It may not even guarantee that you're going to get any better. Um, sad truth there. It will guarantee that you're going to come out of a debt at the end, as it will do for everything else. But maybe the music industry is slightly different to other industries, where if you want to be a, a barrister, a lawyer, scientist, um, school teacher, etc., etc., you'd have to go to the university to get those degrees. I would think, I'm not looking at being someone coming at me now and saying, no, you don't. This is in the UK as well. But there's particular subjects that you you need to go to university and you'd need to come out with a particular certificate to say you can do that. That's not the case in the music industry if you want to be a touring musician or a musician or drummer or anything. Um, you don't need a qualification, okay? Now what you do learn at a college is obviously hopefully you may learn how to get better, but you learn to connect with other people. So I wanna go back and I want to talk about my upbringing and my um, path into the professional world to hopefully help you with to answer that question. So I was fortunate enough to be playing by the time I was about 12, 13 years old. I'm going to keep this as brief as I can. 12, 13 years old, I was fortunate enough to be playing with uh, school friends. Um, we had a, an amazing music teacher, which I've talked about before, that basically put me on this path. And so many of my buddies still now kept us on that path. Um, and um, Andy, Andy Oster, I have to say, shout him, shout him out now. Um, and he, he basically, before he came into my school, drums was never classed as an instrument. My music teacher told me that. He said, drums aren't an instrument. It's not a proper instrument. Can you imagine being told that? Um, and then all of a sudden, this six foot two uh, ex amateur rugby player came into our school and decided to teach rugby at the school and was the music teacher. So straight away, there was a demand of respect just because the presence of the guy. Um, and he got us playing everything, jazz, choirs. We had to be part of everything pop music, etc, etc. He was the start for me. So I'd have been 12, 13 years old and that was it. This was the start. 
we were gigging most weekends. We get, we set up a, a our own band away from that that we set up and we played. We did reasonably well. So I knew from that age, this is it. This is what I want to do, and probably this is all I could do. Um, I struggled at school. Um, maybe it was laziness regards academics. Um, maybe it was just because I knew what I wanted to do and that was my focus. Um, no excuse, but I, it's relevant to where we're going. Uh, I was diagnosed later, I was dyslexic, but again, that's not an, not an excuse. So when I came to the end of my schooling, uh, which I would have been, what, 15, 16 years old, I wanted to go to a music college. At the time, I wanted to go to Leeds Music College. Still going, had an amazing jazz course. I had an amazing teacher that said, this is where you want to go. But at the time, I needed an English A-level to go to Leeds Music College. I struggled to get my qualifications to go to sixth form in the first place, but I managed to scrape through and get it. And because of my music, I got into a sixth form to go to study for A-level. Anyway, after the first year, there was no way. I'd still be at school now, and I wouldn't have come out with an A-level in English. So I was heartbroken. I couldn't get into Leeds Music College, but I was playing. I was playing most weekends. At that stage, I, I think I may have just started driving, maybe 18, 17, 18, depending on where the year fell. Um, but probably not. So I was doing a lot of amateur dramatics, playing drums in shows. Um, and I decided, and at the time, I thought that was it. Can't get into the music college. Forget it. Failure. It's not going to happen. Now, first of all, I have to stress here. There wasn't a lot of choices at the time. I would imagine there was maybe two music colleges in the whole of the country. Um, so I left school. A year after my A-levels, I had this conversation with my parents and thought, yeah, this isn't going to happen. Um, and I started making a living from playing the drums. Um, I'd already, like I said, I'd spent five years maybe before working, playing most weekends, earning money from it, working in workingmen's clubs or clubs as they, to what you probably know as, um, just doing anything, earning money, earning more money than any of my mates would be earning. And um, that's how my career started at that age. And then from there, I was, I was born, by the way, I, was, I, was, I lived in Brighton at the time. And while that was taking place, I would um, pick up other gigs. I started getting a few sessions for local bands, etc., etc. So until I was about, I would like to say, 18, I based myself down in Brighton and I was trying to do my stuff and work little bit of everything. Um, I was fortunate that my dad was in the building trade, so if I didn't have any work one week, I could go out and work with him, earn some money from that way. You know, don't think that you're going to just come into this and it's going to happen. It's not. So one week I could be doing a, a, a decent couple of gigs or four or five gigs. I could be doing a show and then the following week there's no work, so I'd go out and work with my dad. So by the time I got to about 18 years old, work started going further afield. I started traveling more. Um, I got into bands that was trying to travel. I started to get into chart bands, bands that were having records out. I started doing some, a few sessions that were down in, in the South Coast that were becoming, that they were getting themselves on the scene. I was in bands that were almost getting signed, nearly getting signed, all this kind of nonsense. So um, that's how my career started. This is no different to now. I would never have changed what happened back in those days when I would just do anything. Play in function bands, play in wedding bands or whatever you want to call them, the mitzvah bands, whatever they're called. Um, playing in a hotel. I remember doing uh, six month, two nights a week playing strictly born dancing in, in a hotel at 18, 19 years old. Uh, then I might have gone, I think I might have done my first ever Again, you're too old to remember, young to remember all this stuff, but I probably did my first Top of the Pops at that stage as well. So I was doing everything, and I, and I didn't care. That's what we did, and that's what we do now. And I learned my trade like that. And this was it. I then I went out on the road, etc., etc. Now I'm going to speed the story up. Um, and after about two or three years, early 20s, maybe 21, it was time for me to completely in, in 
involve myself and in, immerse myself with London. Moving to London and I'm going to be the next guy. This is it. Here we go. I'm coming into London, watch out. So I had a few contacts. I had friends that said, you've got to come to London. I had somewhere to live. And I remember moving there, January, moved into London. And it was tough. It was really tough. And it's something that I've discussed uh, in public and openly before. It's probably the darkest time of my life. Um, I took contracts away from London because other gigs would come in and it'd be six months here, eight months here. I would take them. Back in those days, you know, we only had a, we didn't have a mobile phone in those days. It was all, uh, it was all, you know, landline. So if you if you went away from the house for eight months, obviously you're not going to get a phone call. But I did, um, and I did that for a while until I decided, uh, right now I'm going to stay here and I'm going to I'm going to just try and get in on the sessions. I'm going to try and work. And the bottom line is that for two or three years that just didn't happen. It was really really tough. Um, you start doubting yourself. I was auditioning for everything. I was getting what we call closed auditions, which for those that don't know is when a gig would come up, but they don't make it public. And so you get a closed audition and you think, this is it, I've got the gig and etc. etc. So this is where that topic, careers as a drummer. The one thing I always knew right back in those days was I am going to be a drummer. I'm going to earn my living from playing the drums. I don't know how, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know I'm going to play the drums and earn my living. That's all I knew. So all through the dark stages when I was doing window, I was fitting windows and doing gigs in the night and, and I was doing all kinds of horrible shitty jobs to try. I knew I was going to be a drummer. Um, I never lost that faith, ever. I worked hard, I practiced hard. Everything that I earned to in other jobs to maintain this drumming, um, I, I put back into the drums, I invested. You know, and I'd get a session, I don't know, once a month. Uh, you know, I think some, sometimes this is a little bit misleading as well. When people say I'm a session drummer, and you're like, well, you're not a session drummer. You're not doing, you're not doing what Steve Gadd did and doing, you know, seven sessions a day that's you know you're not doing that that doesn't exist so I realized that I had to branch out I'd never ever decided um this is I want to be a jazz drummer I want to be a rock drummer I want to be this drummer I never knew that I just said I want to be a drummer I learned all those skill sets that I knew I had to be I also probably now realized that I was probably looking at teaching and, and starting to understand that side of the the business etc etc so anyway after a couple of years um, of really really tough I was doing some bits and pieces but certainly couldn't class myself as a professional musician that could earn pay all the bills just from playing the drums I ended up um, getting some bits and pieces and again I was getting close so I was in a few bands that were really close to signing and we'd get paid to be playing with that band but like I said over the year for 12 months if I was really honest with myself, I'd look at that and go, you're not a professional musician. You know, you may have gone, great, I've had a good four months, and then I haven't done anything for. I then got a gig in town uh, at an old place called the Talk of London, which was the old Talk of the Town. Um, it had been there for a long time, been there since the 50s. Uh, it was in Jewelry Lane, if anyone knows London. A new London, new, yeah, New London Theatre. Um, it was probably an 11 piece band at the time. I auditioned with a hundred drummers. Um, and again, like I said, I think I might have talked about this before. Um, and I got the gig and it was a six night a week contract. And that was a start for me um, because not only did I have a six night a week contract 12 months of the year, and it was a tough gig to do because there was a lot of reading, a lot of backing cabaret, a lot of click work, four hours a night. Um, but I could also go off and do other stuff. Um, that's where I, I made a lot of friends with people like Ralph Salmons and Neil Wilkinson, and just Ian Thomas, all those people. That's where that all came from. So this was it. I was off. I started. I thought, brilliant. I'm in town. I've got a gig. I've got a day job, if you like. My four hours a night. I can go off and I could do other stuff. Um, and I did. I went off and I did other bits and pieces. Um, and um, that was that was really good. So later on, 
I did that gig for 10 years, by the way. So, um, but towards the end of that, that gig, I'd been working quite a lot, but I was, I was getting a little bit frustrated. I wanted to do other stuff. Sessions weren't really working for me. I wasn't getting the calls for the sessions. I'd get some. Um, and I, so I fell into teaching. And like I said, I'm going to condense this as, as shortly as I, I can now. So I sort of fell into teaching. But then I went away and I, I really tried to immerse myself in how to teach. Uh, I started reading books on the way that we think, the way that we work, etc, etc. So, going back to uh, career paths. That wasn't my career path. I never anticipated. All I knew was I wanted to be a drummer. Now, I've been really fortunate. You know, this on the wall, the Olympics, um, Hans Zimmer, uh, events like the Champions League. None of those skill sets had I ever worked on. I'd never worked on teaching 1,800 students at one time. I'd never worked on 1,000 drummers at the Olympic. I'd never worked on 500 drummers for the Champions League final or that kind of big budget production. I'd never worked on trying to put something together. for. I'd never done that kind of stuff. So I went and learned those skill sets. Okay, and, and I go back now to everything at the beginning of my playing and thinking, right, what, what was the most important thing for me? You didn't get into Leeds Music College and you were gutted. You were devastated. Can you imagine at, at 17, 18 years old, because your English isn't very good, you can't get into a music college. When I knew my playing was okay, I couldn't get in. Okay, so I could have given up and gone, that's it. Okay, but then I look back and I think, right, working with all those older musicians I used to work with, um, working in really, really tough clubs up north, um, where they actually, it is a bit like the Blues Brothers, we did have screens at the front of the uh, stage, so when they threw stuff at the band that you wouldn't get, you know, all you got was wet. Um, working in, in workingmen's clubs, holiday camps, backing shows from um, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar to Mac and Mabel and everything in between, learning all those skills, I realised, was probably the most important thing I've ever done more than I'd have ever got a college. And the reason for that was relationships that I built with musicians, what to do, what not to do, how to deal with personalities, how to deal with personalities in the band that are just not nice people. Um, and they're just gonna give you a tough time, whatever happens, how to deal with that. Um, so I think that although I started at 12, 13 years old and said, this is what I want to do, I think all the skill sets that I've learned over the years, the same with even MikeDolver.com or what I've been doing there 21 years ago, or this. You know, if you'd have told me, if you'd have told me in January when we were all at the NAMM show, you're going to be doing Instagram live shows and you're going to be just talking to yourself to a TV, uh, to a, a phone screen, and uh, in eight months' time or nine months' time, I would have gone, no, that's, that's I, I don't know anything about that. That's not going to happen. So you learn, you adapt, okay? And they are the people that are surviving. They are the people, we have to remember, and I've said this before, we're not going to be in this situation forever. This is going to go back to some kind of normality. And we have to be ready. Now, the normality may be different slightly. I think the industry is never going to go back to what it used to be like, but it's going to go back. There's no doubt about that. So, so all those different career moves that I've done, the one thing I've done through all of that is exactly what I set myself out to be, and that is to be a professional drummer. Um, you, you could pick any one thing that I've just mentioned, and I had to really think about how to do that. Even adapting to online lessons here, I had to think about it, I had to go out and do some research. I mean, the research is a lot easier now, it's a lot more accessible. But you could go back to the Olympics, I mean, of course we had no one to talk to. We had no one to go, well, how did, how did they do it in China? A thousand drummers, that's all, that was it. That's all we knew. And when I say we, I'm talking about Ralph Salmons. Was there. But we, we had to sit down and we had to work out. Ralph Salmons, Paul Clavis, we all had to sit down and go, well, how are we going to do this? How, we've got this amount of time. So we learn, but we take on all those skill sets that we'd had at the beginning. So the new skill sets that you have to learn as you go. Um, right, now, hopefully... That's helped. I have got a question in here. I'm going to pop this up. Let's see. Oh, I've got a few questions in here. 
Wow, okay, so. Right, okay. So let's start here. Uh, right. Okay, let's just go in here. I don't get the whole question sometimes, so that's why I don't. Right, so Gareth Plays Drums for YouTube has just sent me in a question and said, do you think the process of tuning drums is sometimes overlooked? Um, yes, I do. I do think it's overlooked. Um, it's part of what we do. If you want to sound, if you want to get into the studio, you need to know this sort of stuff now. Um, there's some really good people out there. I've, I've had one on here, Jeff Davenport. Um, drum tuning workshops does a great job. Uh, ben uh, Evans in the UK does a good thing about this, talking about tuning. Um, there's some, you know, the drum techs are really, really good. I mean, I just, I know if I start mentioning them, I'm going to forget a lot, so I'm not even going to attempt to. But yeah, I think you do. But I think that the most important thing is that you do. No one taught me how to tune. I think the experience teaches you how to tune. Uh, and we're constantly changing it. And it goes back to everything I've just talked about on the today's topic about the career path in drumming. You know, if you want to learn anything now, you just go out there and you try and learn and you burst yourself. You sit there with a drum, you play around with it. What works well, what doesn't work? Look at other drummers, talk about it. But I definitely, definitely, definitely think that maybe we don't spend as much time. And, and to be honest with you, I don't think this is a new issue. I think that's always been an issue. In fact, we're probably better educated now than we were back in my day when I first started. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's something to look at. Right, let's have another go. What else we got here? Right, ah, this is a good one. So, um, Drumming Studio 12, best advice to becoming a session drummer. Okay, right, first of all, that job doesn't exist. Let's just get it out of there. Don't let anyone kid you. That job does not exist anymore. You cannot just earn a living well, that, there is a few, but I mean, we could put them on one hand from just being a studio drummer because it's not happening anymore. You have to be, if you want to be survive, and when I say survive, I'm talking about have a career in the music industry for 40 years, you have to adapt. Steve Gadd's out on tour. You know, Steve Gadd's one of the greatest. Steve Gadd goes out on tour. He, he does sessions, but he's out on tour. 20 years ago, maybe, he was doing just sessions. And of course, a lot of people now have got their own studios and so they can have files sent to them. But don't think of yourself as a session drummer. You have to think of yourself as a drummer or as a professional musician. And however you do that, however you earn the money, and like I said, I'm not talking about a week now or six months, I'm talking about your career. You have to think about it for your career. There's some great drummers in here now watching this who are an amazing drummers, who would just not be able to survive just on sessions alone. You have to do everything. And I think they both help each other as well. By going out and playing live, it helps you when you're doing sessions. So how to get into studio work or how to get into um, um, session drumming or uh, meaning drumming in general is exactly what I've just talked about here. Do everything, say yes to everything, learn everything, Go and do it. Play everything, any style of music. If you have to stick a bow tie on and sit in a hotel foyer, you do it. You're playing the drums. Do everything. Okay. Um, right. I've got one more question. I think in here. Right. Okay. So, Anne Doling, what are your views on young talented drummers continue with a d degree qualifications? Right. Well, first of all, um, I know that um, this is Ollie's m nan. So, I don't know if you're talking about Ollie here. Um, a degree means nothing, sadly. You're not gonna go and get a, you're not gonna go and do an audition for Little Mix and they're gonna go, right, you need a degree, you're not coming in here if you haven't got a degree. Um, I think the experience of a, of a college or a university or whatever you wanna call it, music colleges, it's the, it's the opportunity to meet new people and mix. I was fortunate, like a lot of my generation, that we played in clubs and we could look, meet people. There was a lot of places for us to play. Unfortunately, those situations aren't out there anymore. This is why there's so, so many amazing church musicians, because they've got that network now of playing in churches and playing music. You've, you've got to play music. Um, you know, the degree, forget the degree. 
the degree doesn't mean anything. You know, it might mean something to put on your wall and say I've got a degree in play, like playing music, but it really it doesn't get you the gig. Okay, you're going to get the gig. Um, I think that we live in a society now, and this is my opinion, by the way, so don't shoot me down, everyone that's going to disagree with this. Um, we live in a society now where there's too much, I think there's too much pressure on young people. They go to school, and then at the end of the school, schools encourage them now to stay there. Right, you've got to go to sixth form. You've got to go, you've got to learn, and I think you do now, actually, I think it's a law. But then after that, it's like, right, now what do we do? With them? Well, let's push them into universities. You've got to go to university. Well, I want to be, um, I want to be a hairdresser. Okay, well, you've got to go to university for that. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. There's so much pressure on these kids. You know, you've got to get out there and you've got to play. If you want to be a professional musician, you've got to play because a college will not teach you that. Okay, they're going to teach you all the skills. They're going to teach you how to use it, but you've got to play with bands. So if you're going to go to a college, forget the degree, forget what you're going to come out with. If you're going to go to college, you go there for connections and to play with as many people as you possibly can. And if you can't do that out in the real world, then maybe the college is the place for you. But do not go for a degree um, because, like I said, they need to give you something because at the end of the year, two years, three years, you need that piece of paper. Um, and it's, like I said, I think there's too much pressure on these young people because then they have got to, they're worried that they've got to reach these goals. Okay, they might be having a good time in the meantime, but trust me, I had a great time at 17 years old, sitting in a van, driving around the country, you know, at the middle of the night, stopping in service stations, working in the most horrendous clubs you could ever, ever imagine. But I absolutely loved it. It was incredible. I had a great time. I mean, it's a whole completely different subject that I'm not going to get into now. But there was massive sacrifices that I made. I never had a social life. I didn't want a social life. My commitment was to music and that was it. And, and so, you know, going back to the answer, I don't feel that you should be going to college for a degree. The degree will not get you a gig. Simple. Mm. Now, I don't know how many people I've upset there, but here we go. So, today's lesson. You want a lesson? So, um, I noticed last week when I watched this back on Instagram that you couldn't really see what was going on here. So, um, if there's any more questions, I'm not going to actually look at the screen for a second because I'm going to change my Instagram camera around a little bit. Um, YouTube, you don't have to worry, but I want to just put this here. And if you've got any questions, put back in that question mark box because I'm not going to see the screen. And I want to double check what we can see this time because, like I said, last week I've got my little made up practice kit here. Oh, yeah, I think we're all right. Okay, let's come down here a bit. Okay, so you've got a ride pad. Okay. This is where it all goes, this is where it all goes wrong, by the way. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is something, it's quite a simple exercise that's actually in Jim Chapin's book. Great book. Uh, we're going to play a triplet swing with the right hand. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Okay, and we're going to play eighth notes with the left hand. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Which means that the triplet swing will not come down with that last snare drum. So it's going to sound like this. Now, if I put them all onto one surface, I've got this. Now, that's not the lesson. Anyone that's followed me or saw my video last month, last week that I put on Instagram, knows that I am all about working on your weaker side. So what we're going to try and do now is we're going to try and switch from left over.
that's this week's lesson. So, let me get this back. YouTube, I hope you caught that. I've got a giveaway. If you're still here and you're ready for a giveaway, I'm going to give away today. Okay, I'm back. Okay, we're up, we're up and running. I'm going to give away today a pair of my signature Vic Fur sticks. Ooh, okay. Uh, it's actually uh, an SD4 combo, which is a maple stick. Um, if you're in the UK and you're watching this live now, then you can um, you can answer this question. Although I don't know what my question is going to be yet. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. So because it's uh, all right, so let's let's do this question, and I'll tell you who my guests are. So the first person in. So get ready. Are your fingers ready? The first person that can tell me what the name of Zildjian's new symbol line is that came out, that I mentioned in today's show. The first person that can tell me what it is um, wins a pair of my signature sticks. So the first person that can tell me what the name of the new Zildjian symbol range is and you living in the UK, answers that question, wins today's prize. Rachel, you win. You win. Concept shop. Well done. Congratulations. So DM me your address and I will um, pass this over. So uh, before I go, I'm going to tell you uh, this week's guest, but I'm also going to say to you all, please share um, what I'm trying to do here. Monday nights I'm trying to do my live chat show, uh, live Instagram show I should say. Um, it's on YouTube, it's on my YouTube page which is Drum Clips. There's a lot of other stuff up there as well if you want to go and check that out. Um, and and I guess you knew as well Daddy Drum Tech. Daddy Drum Tech who's from the US, um, he, he knew the answer to that one. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so please tell people about this. You can DM me. Um, share it, let people know what's going on, etc, etc. So Monday nights is always this show. Um, on Tuesday and Wednesday nights is live Instagram chat shows. Uh, I think it's number 88 tomorrow night. So uh, 88 tomorrow night and my guest tomorrow night, Tuesday, uh, in case you're watching this on uh, YouTube later, Tuesday the 10th of November, we're going to do it at 6 p.m. UK time, which I think is 10 a.m. in LA, and that works out at about uh, two o'clock in New York. And in fact, he's just come on. He's he's just joined now, just as I'm about to announce my next my guest for tomorrow night is Kaz Rodriguez. So just as Kaz comes in, he's just had his tea. Um, he comes up on my Instagram. So tomorrow night at six o'clock. We've got um, Kaz Rodriguez, and like I said, I think that's live chat number 88. Um, so it's a bit scary, that, isn't it? So and on Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday night, we're going to do it an hour later. So Wednesday is going to be the 11th of November um, at 7 o'clock UK time, and which is going to be 11 a.m. in L.A. and 3 o'clock, I think, in New York or East Coast. And my guest on Wednesday night is going to be uh, Brendan Buckley. So uh, two great guests this week. Um, you can go away and do some research if you don't know those guys. Um, but so Kaz Rodriguez is tomorrow night. Um, I love that name as well. Rodriguez. It's such a cool name, isn't it? Hey? Rodriguez. And uh, Brandon Back Buckley is going to be on um, Wednesday night. So two guys I know really well. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. So please come and join me. Six o'clock tomorrow night. Seven o'clock on Wednesday night. Tell your friends. I'll put up the information about Kaz after today's show. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's show. Like I said, share it if you if you like. Um, tell people about it. Tell people what we're trying to do here. Um, keeping the drum community good. Um, it leaves me to say what I say every week. Look after yourself very important let's use this time can you know we're not going to get this time back again so let's make sure we use it positively look after yourself 
look after each other, be nice to each other. It's very important to be kind to each other at the moment. You know, we live in a very strange and split society at the moment. So we all need to, drumming, especially musicians, and we all need to pull together and be respectful and look after each other. And I will see you all.